a nation will not survive morally or economically when so few have so much while so many have so little all things considered as individuals get richer they invest more and spend less solely this amounts to nothing but for a bigger scope it implies that the more pay is unequal the more wealth is unequal the more prominent the proportion of speculation to buy a request will be economic inequality is an unequal distribution of income and opportunity between different groups in a society it is a concern in in almost all countries around the world and often people are trapped with minimal opportunity to move up the social stepping stool the focus of work is specifically on the gap between the well offs and the less well off in the overall economic distribution economists talk about two types of economic inequality that is wealth and income inequality income inequality looks at how big the differences in what people get paid are in the economy income implies something vital inside our social orders and nothing in between them the clarification of this is that inside our social orders we are checking out relative pay or social position economic well being where we are in relation to each other and the size of the gaps between us what will occur in the event when we extend the differences or compress them and make the income differences greater or more modest in simple terms economic inequality is about a level battleground where everybody has the same access to the same wealth poor individuals aren't poor because they need to be and not all rich individuals got what they have through difficult work so now talking about cause and consequences of impact of inequalities in the economy the number there are number of reasons why inequalities are happening the main causes are poverty income gender religion caste and etc and now technology trade and institutions are also the main cause of inequalities which directly or indirectly impacts the economic performance inflation is also another reason of inequalities during inflation few profit earners gains while most wages earner loses tax evasion in india the personal ta- income tax rate are so high that it gives rise to evasion and avoidance due to which parallel economic gro- uh, growth takes place regressive tax in this indirect tax gives maximum revenue to the government which is re- in regressive in nature new agriculture strategy no doubt india's uh, india's uh, new agriculture strategy led to green revolution and high productivity but the benefits of high productivity are being enjoyed by rich farmers and uh, land owners but the economic condition of uh, poor farmers and uh, landless farmers are deteriorating over the years thank you talking about inequalities from the global perspective for decades the drag on demand growth is stemming from the rising inequality has been compensated for by other economic and policy developments notably a long running decline in the interest rates going forward however some compensating mechanisms are likely to fail which means that the inequality induced drag on demand would translate directly into the slower economic growth Moreover the rise in inequality has contributed significantly to downward to downward pressure on demand growth that is labeled as secular stagnation inequality has transferred income from the lower and middle income households and the households with the highest savings rate from the indian perspective there are certainly many changes that one may have observed in the 20 in the 12, last 20 years access to food grains from the public distribution system at a subsidized rate has improved many villages have been electrified and more children are going to the primary schools in the villages and urban to ur- urban slums as well but if we take into account india's per cap- per gro- per capita gross 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 domestic product that is a gdp it has increased five times between 2000 between the year 2000 to 2016 This doesn't mean that the income of the entire population has increased, but at least the top one percent in India has earned twenty one percent of total country's income in two thousand nineteen, which was eleven percent in nineteen ninety. The wealth distribution tells a similar story as well. The richest ten percent Indians own eighty point seven percent of wealth. 
inequality in income distribution coefficient points to an increasing inequality in india the coefficient in 2014 was 34.4% uh, and also the coefficient has increased uh, increased to 35.7% in 2011 and in 2018 it was 47.9% As per the world's inequality report 2022, India is one of the most unequal countries in the world with rising poverty and an affluent elite. The report highlights that the top 10% and the top 1% in India hold 57% and 22% of the total national income respectively, while the bottom 50% share has gone down to 13% only. The report was authorized by Lucas Chancel and coordinated by renowned economist Thomas Piketty and Gabriel Zakman. The average national income of an Indian adult population is rupees two lakh four thousand two hundred. Here, the bottom fifty percent of earns only rupees fifty three thousand six hundred ten, while the top ten percent earns rupees eleven lakh sixty six thousand five hundred twenty, which is over twenty times more. In India, the top ten percent and top one percent hold fifty seven percent and twenty two percent of the total national income respectively, which share of the bottom fifty percent. has gone down to 13% only the report goes on to say that the over that over past 3 years the quality of inequality data released by the government has seriously deteriorated which has made it particularly difficult to access recent inequality changes the report notes that the share of the public wealth across countries has been on a decline for decades now public assets typically include public buildings housing administration schools universities hospitals and other public services the secular decline in public wealth and rise in private wealth was exacerbated by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic the report says that emerging economies like india and china experienced a faster growth in private wealth than wealthy countries after they transitioned away from regulated economies The COVID-19 pandemic has had a massive impact on economic activity around the globe. To tackle the economic consequences of the pandemic, most governments have used a combination of family income support and credit facilities for them. In particular, expanded unemployment and insurance schemes has been adopted to stabilize the income of the workers and contain the impact of the crisis on consumption and economic inequality. Yet how appropriate and effective these policies are remain unclear mainly due to lack of reliable indicators allowing to track economic activity at a fine temporal resolution the covid-19 pandemic has had a terrible influence on poverty level and inequality in addition to being a public health emergency minorities have been hurt harder by the crisis and are recovering more slowly responses to the first and second wave of the covid pandemic has been naturally focused on decreasing infection and mortality around the world There are also increased attempts to avoid the outbreak's sub economic implications particularly in terms of jobs productivity and growth. However, the pandemic is a financial disaster with long-term implications. Furthermore, poverty level are rising and inter and intra-country inequalities is expanding. The COVID-19 pandemic is increasing inequality in at least four ways. For for example, higher paid workers are more likely to work from home, but lower paid blue collar workers are less likely to do so. second a higher proportion of low paid workers engage in important services including healthcare policing teaching cleaning garbage collection and moreover where they are more likely to come into contact with infected persons third lower wage workers are more frequent in sector where operations have been interrupted such as hotels restaurants and tourism services fourth The pandemic is creating tension between richer countries that can afford to bail out the companies and offer social safety nets and poorer countries that lack the resources to do so. I think the intuitions that inequality is divisive and socially corrosive has been around since French Revolution. What changed is now we can compare societies and more and less equal societies and see what inequality does. inequality can be found within each family each community and each nation inequality is the major cause of political economic social instability and create crisis and conflicts within the society a major cause of inequality is unequal uneven biased power centric distribution of human economic social political cultural and spiritual human necessities 
Economic inequality is measured by wealth, income, disproportions in distribution and consumption pattern in the specific areas. Let me suggest few solutions that can have a positive effect in reversing rising inequality. If the private market fails to provide enough job to achieve full employment, the government must become the employer of the last resort. When the growth is below capacity and the job market is slack, apply fiscal and monetary policies aggressively to achieve the full employment. Take actions against the countries that manage their currencies to subsidize their export to us and the tax our exports to them. Support sectoral training apprenticeship and earn while you learn program. Raise the minimum wage to 12 rupees per hour and raise the overtime salary threshold. Maintain the strength safety net programs like earned income tax, uh, cost to company, SNAP, Medicaid, etc. Each of these policies, if carefully implemented, has the potential to lift working families out of poverty, support greater economic mobility and reduce inequality.